Hello everyone. This video is the second part of this tutorial series dealing with making our first mission in the Valkyrie tool for Descent and Mentions of Madness. In the last video I showed how to place some tiles and tokens for Descent and this time we will deal more in detail with placing monsters and a more complex event logic for quests. So before we go to this new stuff, I will show you the map, which is now finished. This area and all of this stuff here is new. In the first tutorial, we only had this part and this part. As you can see, we got some new tiles here and some doors. And similar to the first video, those doors have an event which is called after using the open door action which places the next tiles and the next door. So if we test this, our first door event places those tiles, our next door event places this path and this door event places the rest of the tiles and the missing search tokens. So now we want to make monsters spawn in this first room. So I'm going to go to my door again. And after our first open door event, we'll have another follow up event, which I'll create now. And this time it will not be a normal event, but a so-called spawn. A spawn will automatically place monsters on the map. Placing just means that it will show where the monsters should be placed. And afterwards, the monsters will be visible here on the right. And when the heroes end their first turn, the monsters will have their turn. So. The spawn will be a random monster, so I will call it open group, open group one. And as you can see here, the type for the monster which is chosen will by default always be a zombie. By clicking on this button, you can say that maybe another monster should be spawned, maybe an Etienne. Now you see that two monsters here are here in this list. This does not mean that uh, they are randomly chosen. Um, the logic is a little bit different. Instead, always the first monster will be chosen here. So if you only use the types list, it doesn't make sense to have multiple monsters in the list. So I remove the zombie. So I'll add a text here, place the group as shown, and a button. And the cool thing is the name of the group. So Etienne can be automatically added using a built-in variable again. So I'll just use the brackets and the word type. And now the word Etienne will be automatically added when starting the game. So let's test this again. Open door. And here it says place the adding group. And now it blinks here in this red tone. This is a little bit different from the uh, normal placing events. So if we go back to our editor, go back to our spawn event, you can see here this text for tiles and tokens normally says camera and not directly highlight, but for spawns, we only have the highlight or the unused option. Unused will say it will not highlight anything on the board, but we want to play, uh, highlight it so the players know where the adhens should be placed. So as I said before, we don't want to have a, a defined group, but a random group instead. So that's why we use this pool traits option here. And we say we want to have a random monster from the cursed trait or the mountain trait. 
or the dark trait. So randomly a monster of those groups will be chosen. And if you still have something here uh, selected in the types, this says that this groups should not be chosen even if it has one of these traits. So even if the etin is in the or has the mountain trait, it will not be selected. We don't want that. That's why we will remove the etin here. And now if we test again, another random monster should be chosen. As you can see, this time it was a wrath and the name of the monster has automatically been added here. Okay, now the monsters, uh, the players would have to fight against the monster somehow if they end their turn. The action of the monster will automatically start from the minion and the master monster. And as you can see here, the information for the monster are automatically shown and the actions. In one of the next videos, I will show how you can define this stuff by yourself if you need some special actions for the monsters, which are not the default actions used in the app. So next we want to make our second door event a little bit more complex. The heroes won't be able to open the door directly. Instead, it has a new text here, which says that the door is blocked. And our action text here below will say that the heroes need to test the might attribute. Like this. The playstyles event 3 will not directly be called. Instead, a new event we will call, uh, let's check my tutorial again. Nineteen B test check. So now the text will say something like, "Did you pass the test?" And this time there will be two buttons to follow up. One button saying no. You can add new buttons using the plus button, and one button saying yes. And we can also set a color for the button. So the no button will have a red color and the green button, uh, the yes button will have a green color. So now if the heroes are not successful for the test, we will add another monster. And this monster will always be a shadow dragon. So we will give it a name Shadow Dragon. The type will be Shadow Dragon 2, not Zombie. We'll have some flavor text here again. And the monster will be spawned here at the store. Again, we will say something like place the type group as shown. Oh, no, in this case, we don't want the whole group to be placed, but only place a type as shown. So only one monster should be placed. The app makes no difference between placing one or two monsters, so you have to choose in your text how many monsters the hero should place. Saying something like place a or place one type means only one monster and place the group always means placing the complete group. So let's test this again, but before we can test it, we need a successful event too. So I will say 19b. Uh, 29b is it test successful and 
and some or an Ipsum text for now. Some flavor text. And let's test this again. So random group and now our door event. We will test might. We did not pass it. Some flavor text and the shadow dragon group is shown. That's okay. Now the thing we don't want to have, I will show this. The heroes have to do the test again if and if they fail again, another shadow dragon should be placed. So this would make it pretty hard for the heroes if always a new shadow dragon is uh, placed in the game, even if they uh, already defeated the first one. So that's why we will go back to our door event here. And now we will add another variable. Yeah, and let's check how did I call it. Uh, new variable uh, nineteen B minions spawned, and we will set it to one. And now this time we will also use a so-called variable test here, and we will test this variable we just created. If it is not one, so zero, because variables are always defined with zero. So this means this event will only be chosen if uh, the heroes fail the test for the first time. Now to make this work, we need to go back to the door and need to make another event which will be called instead. So we'll add the plus button to create another event here and it will be called something like 29B test failed. Something like the door stays locked is a good text for this. And nothing else happens. So let's test this again. Test, we fail the shadow dragon spawn and now the second time we do it, only the door stays locked appears. No new shadow dragon, that's what we want. Okay, cool. Now, if the heroes are able to open the door, we still want to place the shadow dragons, but only after the new tiles have been placed. So, added this successful event here before. We don't really need that. I will delete it again. And now I will call my place tile 3 event, which I already created before. So now the next tiles will be placed, the door will be removed, and as a follow-up event, we will again call our Shadow Dragon event. And because we have our variables here, even if the heroes failed with the first test and opened the door afterwards, the shadow dragons won't appear again. So this time the heroes pass the test, the new tiles are placed and still the shadow dragons appear. Okay, perfect. So now we only have to deal with our last tiles here in this area. And this time the spawn event will be a little bit different. Or not the spawn event, but the logic for the search tokens. 
I will remove the search tokens here in this case because we don't need all tokens all the time because for two players only two tokens will be shown, for three players three tokens and for four players four tokens. So that's why we will have three different follow-up events. So I will remove this text here. And the first follow-up event will be for two players. Place search tokens two players. We only have a text which says place search tokens as shown. The camera will move here. We have a button sound again. And for two players, we will only place the tokens search on B1 and B2. Okay, now, and we have to be sure that this event will only be called if there are two players and not more. That's why we will use another test here. And we will use another the build in variable called heroes. And this variable now checks if there are only two heroes on the map. So we will enter equals two here. And now we will make different events, but very similar. So that's why I'm going to copy the text and add another follow up event here saying three players place search tokens as shown camera at the same position and this time we will add b1 b2 and b3 and now for four players copy the text again Oh, no, before I forget, the variable test heroes equals three. And now the last event, four players place such tokens as so shown. And we will add all tokens here now. And we test for four players. Okay, perfect. Now we will test it. A quite annoying thing is when you test here, you can choose how, how many heroes you want to have. So you will randomly have selected two, three or four heroes. So now I'm going to start and I'll click through to my last door event. Okay. Now three tokens should appear after this here. Yes, perfect. So three search tokens. Now those tokens are not normal search tokens in our quest. They are special tokens which contain the gear of the heroes because after the fight against Zechareth, they have lost all the gear and now they have the chance to get it back if they search these tokens. So we will go back to our events here and we will make a follow up event for all these events. It will be the same follow up event for all tokens. So I'll reuse it. And the event is called search tokens rules. I have prepared text for this. I will now add, and this text says that the hero should uh, randomly now draw cards from the marketplace cards. 
from Act 2. And those cards will later be the gear they can use in the fight against Zechareth in this last battle for this quest. So as I said before, this event will be reused not only by the Search Tokens 2 players, but also by the 3 players event. And the 4 players event. Cool, now we only have to deal with the text of the tokens. So I'll have to check my tutorial here again. The text for each token will say, this rack contains some parts of your gear. And it will have a button sound again. I will copy in this text and put it in here for all of the tokens for getting the button sound. Okay, and now there will be another follow-up event. And it will be a different event for each of the tokens because we have to remove the token afterwards. So it will say search token 14b1 and the text. And before I forget it, the text of the button of the token has to be changed again too. So it will say action search again without the italic stuff. And now the first thing we are going to do is saying that the token should be removed. Remove this token and afterwards our rules for the token will follow. So we will now say remove token 14b1. And now our draw gear event follows. So we'll add another event here which will be reused again. Called draw gear, which say instead of drawing a search card, draw one weapon, one armor, and one other item from the three card tiles you have prepared. So, as I said, this same event has to be recreated for all the other tokens, so for B2. We have the event name called search token 14B2. We remove the token again. And afterwards, our follow-up event follows. Let's check it, the draw key event again. And the last event for our, no, not the last. Still two missing. Search token 14b3. Move the token, this and the follow-up event, draw gear. Now really the last one, search token 14b4, text, remove action and the follow-up event. By the way, 
just check in between if you remove the right token sometimes this can lead to some annoying bugs where you're not sure why suddenly a token disappeared which you did not want to appear disappear that's always a reason why you should really uh, look at the names of the tokens and don't use the default names and i put unnecessary word token in here again for all of the tokens the good thing is it automatically renames everything so if an event points to a token you don't have to rename it everywhere it will automatically be renamed always will be working okay let's test this again we have four heroes so we have luck and can test all of the stuff All four search tokens here, our rule text, and oh, I forgot the text here for the button, but the token is removed, and we get our rule text. This one is working too, this one is working, and this one too. So, just to fix this, I'm gonna copy the search text and now all the tokens have the correct text so to make this last room a little bit harder we will not only spawn some more monsters here but also make the heroes have to survive for three rounds and if only one hero dies, the whole mission will be failed. So that's why after our door event and the special tiles event, we will add another follow up event. We'll call it place Zacharash. And this time it will not be a normal spawn, but a special rule saying that the Hareth will stay, stand here. And the hero should place its figure here, but it, he will not directly attack the heroes, but he will do some of his magic at the end of each round. So we will have some text here. Place the Hareth as shown does not move or attack and cannot be defeated. The harass will use his magic at the end of each round to attack the heroes. Okay, perfect. And furthermore, we will spawn some more monsters. So we'll have another spawn here. We'll make it gate monster one. It will spawn here and it will just have some random traits I don't really care about. So just some random stuff. Okay. not the zombie type to exclude and some flavor text again and place the type group as shown respecting group limits Okay, and now another spawn. This will be the item monsters because they will spawn here next to the items. Again, some random groups. 
No, not medium. Mountain and water and coat. And the same text, place the type group as shown, respecting group limits. Okay. Oh, not to forget, always use a flavor text just to give a little bit of story here. Some flavor text. Okay, and as I said before, the heroes will automatically fail this mission if they lose, at, uh, if at least one hero dies, or if directly when one hero dies, so we will have another follow-up event, we will call it uh, Revive Heroes. So, because even if a hero has died now, the heroes will be automatically be revived. Each defeated hero can now execute a free stand-up action. Oh, wrong. Like this. And another follow-up event for a new objective will follow. That's why we call it objective two. Special rules again. The heroes have lost all their moral as soon as one hero is defeated the heroes automatically lose this mission. That's why the objective is now to survive a predefined number of rounds. And we will use a variable here again, survive for var survive rounds Rounds. Copy the name of the variable and set it here on the bottom afterwards. So survive rounds will be three. And as I said before, the moral will be set to zero. Moral is again a built-in variable that's why we can just use it and set it to zero afterwards. So let's test this again. We'll go to our last room. Search rules. Special rules for Zacharias. Oh, I forgot the camera event here. I will add this afterwards. The first spawning group, the second spawning group, the special rules for the stand up action, and the moral has been set to zero. And now the heroes have to survive for three rounds. So I will stop here for this video. In the next video, we will go deeper in the event logic for this survive three round stuff. We will have a special event for the end of each round. And we will have a special event which checks what happens if now another hero will die because the moral will be already zero. So. That's it for this time. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.